Hello and welcome to Optimal Game State. Today we are taking a bit of a detour and we're going to be talking about one of the articles that was up on Warhammer community recently that has caused a little bit of a stir in the community. Um, obviously this relates to Age of Sigmar and it has pretty big implications uh, for that game uh, depending on what you play but uh, it does also have an impact on Warcry and I have seen people go as far as question whether the future of Warcry is in danger or not. So this video is just to dispel that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how uh, Games Workshop do business, typically uh, the usual ways that they um, essentially phase out some of their models, how long that will be, and what we're going to be looking at. So. We're going to take a bit of a tour. If this is your first time looking at this, uh, if you want, there will be a link in the description and you can have a look at the article uh, that uh, Games Workshop posted up. It's a relatively short one. Uh, they're basically uh, winding up to the new release of Age of Sigmar 4.0 and um, in that they're talking about some of the changes that are going to happen. So one of the changes here is that some models are going to become legends. Now, this is a phrase that Games Workshop have used across a couple of their lines. And it's a... Is, is it deceptive? No, that's the, the wrong word for it. But it's maybe in ways a little misleading. One of the reasons that I have been collecting and playing Games Workshop games for as long as I have is because Games Workshop is pretty reliable, has been out there. Um, if you pick up a game, there's a good chance that that game is going to stick around. Uh, you're going to be able to find people to play with it, and the models that you put time and effort in painting will be usable in the future. That has never been something Games Workshop have promised. It's never been something they've said. So, uh, for example, with Magic the Gathering, uh, Watsy have made a couple of statements about certain cards saying that they'll never reprint them. Um, and then, of course, at some point they did in a non-official manner, and that caused them a bit of ruckus. But we've never been told by Games Workshop that our models are going to be there forever. But since the start of the company, for a lot of these, it has been true. If you have a Orc army, you can play your Orc army. If you've got a Dwarf army, you can play your Dwarf army, no matter how far back those models go. Now, Often you might get some special characters or you might get some special units that no longer get rules and um, end up kind of proxied as something else. But for the most part, there's been this perception at least but that if you buy from Games Workshop, it's going to stick around. That is not true and it hasn't been true for quite a while. Um, so there are entire games that have been cancelled by Games Workshop, and it's an unfortunate reality. There was a brief period um, when Games Workshop was super focused on the bottom line and was really interested in just being super profitable, and that meant they cut basically everything that wasn't um, that wasn't the main lines. So Warhammer Fantasy Battle at one point, but even that got cut, and Warhammer Forty K. Um, and then everything else. Um, so what we had, Blood Bowl, we had the old Epic. Uh, th there was a range of different games that all got dropped. Um, we recently saw that again with Aeronautica. So it's a thing that happens. We don't like it. We get annoyed by it. But uh, yeah, it happens. All right, what's this Legends thing? So the first step that happens is a model will no longer get produced. Games Workshop will still be giving rules for them. Um, but when you go to the store, they won't be. you won't be able to buy it. Um, if you look on the store, you will see many in this kind of circumstance. It is often hard to tell whether uh, GW have stopped making a particular set of models or whether they just are having supply issues and they haven't put it in stock. Either way, it is a thing that happens. Um, and often we don't hear anything else about it. So there are, I think a good example is possibly uh, the Underworlds game. So right now uh, there are like I think it's 80 plus percent of the warbands that you would have in Underworlds are no longer produced. Um, what happens there is that the meta kind of favors the more new ones, so people don't necessarily mind, but they still want to be able to play their old warbands, so the cards for them are considered still uh, legal. Now, there's no big books for Underworlds, 
Um, so there doesn't need to be a lot of bloat to maintain it. Uh, however, uh, part of that is that sometimes the the models are poor. You can't get the models anymore. The rules for them aren't great, and that's you know that that's an incentive to buy the new models. Anyway, in this case, what's happening with the legends is where GW wants to say to the players, "Look, we aren't making these models anymore." We're not really interested in driving sales for them, but we acknowledge the fact that you've bought them and you still want to play them. So we are going to provide some rules for them. Now, this next point, legends are not legal in tournaments. So a lot of the, the effort that Games Workshop would put in, the play test and balance doesn't have to doesn't have to be as stringent if it's not going to be played in tournaments. So if you have got a legend model that's super powerful, um, it will impact games at home, but it's not gonna impact the tournament scene. You know, that's that's the idea. Um, in theory, the legends should have, you know, as much effort put into the rules as not. Um, as for any of the others, there's absolutely no reason not to. Often what happens, it's a kind of minimal take, um, a low power level to just let you put the models on the table. Which I guess is fine. One of the big problems, though, is the tournament play tends to dictate how people do actually approach things. Um, it's it's kind of a lingua franca, is what I want to say. It's the if you're meeting someone playing Age of Sigmar, you want to play with the tournament rules because that's considered the baseline. You know, to actually use some of the legend rules will be an exception. So often what happens is people just stop playing the Legends, don't play the Legends, and you know, there's no updates to them. And then eventually, and this is the case with the next edition, you just don't have those rules for the Legends. You know, it's been many years since you couldn't get the actual model themselves. The rules are kind of outdated. And one of the points here is that often if a um, if you can't get a model, you can't buy it, you can't play it. But if the rules for it are bad, then you won't want to play it. That makes no difference. Anyway, so this is what's happening. A bunch of models are going to Legends. So we're going to look at some of the models that are going into Legends. We're then going to talk about the direct impact for Warcry. Okay, so first up we have the Stormcast. Uh, this is a small number. Broadly, the Sacrosanct Chamber, which is the, uh, the versions of the left, uh, so those four in the robe. So these are the kind of magic wielders within the storm within the stormcast. Uh, that line is going. They just said that they're retreating back to the heavens to, you know, work on this arcane problem of the stormcast souls getting slowly raided, roaded. Uh, not great. Uh, so these were the kind of main line for Age of Sigmar 2.0. So there are people out there who have full armies with that. That is quite frustrating for them. I understand that uh, GW are trying to reduce the number of models in the range, um, but they're just going to be bringing more, more models in to sell more. So it is very frustrating. My sympathies for you know anyone who uh, does is in that situation. On the right-hand side, we have some of the Warrior Chamber. Now, we do know that the Liberators are getting new models. So what's probably happening here is that this range of old style Stormcast are uh, getting removed from um, general publication. So the, you just won't be able to get the old models anymore, but they will bring in new models, which will have rules. Now, those Evocators, Sequitors, Castigators, they are going to have legend rules, which, as we said, typically means they're not used. And then you're probably just not going to have any rules from them. It may be a case that they might get updated models eventually down the line, in which case you could use the existing models. But Games Workshop has told us that that's not the fate for the Sacrosanct Chamber in the short term. So we can expect them to yeah not be played at all in 4th uh, edition and probably 5th edition once it comes down, there may not be any reference to them. Skaven is a slightly different scenario. With Skaven, these are super old models. Um, good lord, look at those right overs at the bottom left. Not great. In this case, it's probably a good thing to see these going. We know we're getting a range refresh with the Skaven, so I don't think the Skaven players are upset to, to hear about this. 
We might see some weird things, like if we don't get a Master Molder back, that'll have a direct impact on Warcry, where we do look for, you know, certain interactions. So the Master Molder and the Rat Ogres are great. Um, I think there's some other version that does a similar thing to the Master Molder as well that's not a hero. But, you know, we might have some specific combinations that might be problematic with like, like that. But f broadly, the Skaven range getting refreshed is a good thing. Beast of Chaos, again, is quite similar to um, the Sacrosan Chamber. These are just being removed from Age of Sigmar. So, just gone. Um, very unfortunate. Uh, like, Beasts of Chaos are very kind of signature, I think, for Warhammer. Um, the, that Beast Lord on the top left next to the Doombull is only just out. So, you know, it really did feel like that. Maybe they were warming up to a redesign, and it could have been good, but, you know, we're not. So what is happening here is that they are going to be uh, usable in Warhammer the Old World, but not in Age of Sigmar, which means those poor unfortunates who did rebase all of their square-based Beast of Chaos onto circle-based Age of Sigmar are now going to have to rebase them from circle back onto square. Or, you know, use one of the movement trays or one of the many other ways, but I can appreciate their frustration, uh, I think the big thing is that these are really, really old models. They definitely did deserve a redo. Um, and we might see that down the line, uh, but it is not in the short term. So all these models are no longer going to, are, are not going to be sold in the short term, but we will see another big release like we've seen for uh, Camry and Bretonia and uh, the, the old classic models. So they might get some new options in there, but you know we're, we're out of the age of Sigmar. For Warcry, again, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but the Warband is still there. You know, it's not leaving at the same time as the Age of Sigmar uh, version is changing over. You're not going to be able to get your hands on the models, though. That's going to be the real challenge. Uh, bone Splitters. I, I keep forgetting these every time I uh, warm them up. Yeah, this is... If you're a fan of Bone Splitters, they're basically gone. You're going to have to proxy them as Orcs. Um, the range hasn't been updated in a while. The, I think that plastic box was was a good box for a war cry uh, warband as well. Hedraka's Mad Mob is from one of the Underworlds, and again, it was quite a nice uh, redo of the models. But yeah, all these are gone. Not only are you not going to be able to play them in Mage Sigmar, but you're not going to be able to play them in Warhammer, the old worlds. But as I mentioned, you can proxy them. You know, no one's going to be particularly upset if there's a bunch of orcs in that are just a little bit more savage than not. All right. The real meat of this particular video is looking at these Warcry Warbands. So Iron Golems and Untamed Beasts came out in the original Warcry starter set. The Splinter Fang, the Unmade, Corvus Cabal, and the Cypher Lords were all um, boxes that you could get uh, quickly after the starter box came out. The Spire Tyrants came out a little bit later as a standalone box. Scions of the Flame, interestingly enough, were part of the catacombs box and they came with the sh shadow stalkers shadow stalkers aren't on this list we'll talk about that in a bit and uh, tarantulas blue the tarantulas brood came out at the same time as uh, the chaos ravagers savagers i can't quite remember what they're called with my box I still haven't built mine up. The Dark Oath Savages. Dark Oath, of course. Um, yeah, and again, we'll talk about Dark Oath in a second. And then last, we have the Horns of Hashut, which are a weird anomaly. Horns of Hashut are actually not first edition. They're second edition. So the last release for uh, first edition was the Tranchless Brood uh, against the Dark Oath Savages in that core box. Um Okay, so what's happening here? One, these are all first edition warbands. Uh, I do think there was another world <laughs> where the release schedule went in a different direction. I think Warcry was originally designed to mirror um, Necromunda. So we 
rather than the massive range of warbands we have currently, instead we'd have those main six, so the Iron Golems, Untamed Beast, Mender Fang, the Unmade, Corpse of Cabal, and the Cypher Lords. And we would start getting additions to them. So you would get another Iron Golems box that would include a few extra bits and pieces. Um, you know, a few new fighters, new abilities, new weapons, maybe a big brute of some kind. And the game would then expand in that direction. We would never have left uh, the Chaos Wastes. We would have stayed around the Baron Spire. We would have kept doing the Chaos versus Chaos that I think this game was originally designed in the video to. Now, Warcry was a massive success on release. Uh, it won a bundle of reward of awards for... Um, Quite frankly, a fantastic gameplay. I just love the system. And people asked for more. And uh, GW realized that there were more warbands to put in, that people would you know, enjoy it. So we've got a bit of a weird situation where right now everything in Age of Sigmar essentially um, is usable in Warcry. And it is fantastic. It is a great place to be. So anytime we see something new, like we're going to see, we are going to see new... Uh, Age of Sigmar 4.0 starter box that's going to have new um, Stormcast and we're going to see new Skaven. I will most likely be buying that box to primarily play uh, Warcry with. You know, we, like it, we have a great setup. We've got tons of models. These, out of this selection, I did get the core box. So I got the Iron Golems, I got the Untamed Beasts. I didn't get Smitter Fang, didn't get the Unmade, did get Corvus Cabal and did get the Cypher Lords. Um, so just looking at those six. And... Yeah, I actually didn't get any of the other four. The point being, the stuff that we're currently getting is very exciting, and I'm very interested in it. Uh, my mo so as I said, I do have a Dark Oath, uh, Savagers Warband to put together. Uh, I was in my local store today, and what I picked up was the Vulcan Flame Seekers. So I hadn't got that Warband yet, um, and I really like the look of them. So, you know, Honestly, Splinter Fang and the Unmade are pretty low down on the list of things for me to get. Um, I did check Warhammer.com. Uh, the Unmade are there. Splinter Fang are not. Splinter Fang are quite popular, uh, mostly because their hero is an exceptional ally to bring in. Um, Unmade, less so, uh, but I just love the look of them. They're very distinctive. So... You know, I think there's a good chance I'll probably pick up the Unmade because now I know that they are going to be going out of print. But I'm weighing that up against maybe buying one of the newer ones. I think this is part of the challenge. Uh, I personally do think Games Workshop should be able to keep all of their models in stock on demand uh, and, you know, make money out of it. I have heard lots of people say, yes, well, you know, storage, Games Workshop is a business and so on and so forth. Yes, that is absolutely true, uh, but you know, big businesses can have good practices and they can and they can have bad practices. Um, if Games Workshop wants to double down on a FOMO release schedule where each new release is only up for a month or two, you know, they'll probably make serious bank. And uh, yeah, I if if they push in that direction i'm not sure i want to be part of that it is what it is so, but my point here is the excuse of you know games workshop or business they're going to do business things only goes so far businesses should have good practices they should do good things now i don't fault games workshop i personally think that uh, games workshop would like to be able to sell me the splintered fang and um, but they don't have the infrastructure to do so so i'm not putting it on malice i'm putting it on uh, not incompetence, but uh, lack of um, fully developed uh, manufacturing line, shall we say. The next question really is around Warcry. So we're losing all of these uh, version one, uh, first edition uh, warbands. And they're very, very distinctive. Um, you know, so why why are we losing them? And or indeed, why are they appearing in that particular Age of Sigmar article? They are... They've been mentioned because they are part of uh, the Slaves of Darkness. And in the Slaves of Darkness book right now, uh, you can see a bunch of the rules to run these warbands in that game. That's not going to be the case going forward. In future, what we are going to see is we are going to see a expanded Dark Oath line. 
So uh, where currently, you know, they run a unit of Iron Golems and a unit of Untamed Beasts, that's not going to happen in the future. So that, that's why it's been mentioned in that article there. Uh, honestly, I think Games Workshop probably would have just stopped restocking and then eventually just taken off the website and not mentioned anything. That is something that they regularly do, unfortunately. Um, so we are kind of lucky to have heard this ahead of time that they are planning on taking it out. And I think the argument here is that if they're not going to have rules for these warbands in Age of Sigmar, why would they bother with um, keeping them in stock? So let's talk a little bit more about Warcry. We've just gone through the Gnarlwood. Uh, and we have tons of warbands here. So there were 10 warbands on that previous page. There are 10 more bands on this page. So this is uh, everything, I think, that has been released uh, in the second edition proper. Now, we also have a bunch of additional things. We are constantly getting streams of Underworld miniatures. We are getting those new, like, Saviors of Cinderfall and the Black Talons boxes. Again, stuff on my shelves. I'm way behind in my hobby backlog. This is a regular release schedule. They are putting investment time um, and resources into Warcry. A lot of these also uh, are very, very cool and unique. So we are seeing Warcry Warbands become part of the Age of Sigmar armies. And I think that's something that they're able to do because of the nature of Age of Sigmar, I think that's a little harder for them to do with Kill Team and Warcry. Sorry, Kill Team and Warhammer 40k, which is why I believe they've gone for more what essentially are 40k squads are becoming Kill Team uh, Kill Teams. Whereas what's happening in Warcry is they're able to design a Warcry unit and then bring that in Age of Sigmar. And the reason they're able to do that is because the, the lore is a little bit more flexible, it's still developing, it's still growing, they're able to add new and exciting things and come up with more fun stuff. Whereas with 40K, they still have a lot, a lot of gaps to fill, um, a lot of models that need to be updated and just they need to get through the range. So as a Warcry player, I think we fit in to the Age of Sigmar line much better than maybe Kill Team does into uh, 40k. Now, Kill Team is incredibly successful, so not to take anything away from that, but my point here is Warcry is being well supported. We are getting design and warbands, um, and we're, we're essentially in a good state. Now, I do want to talk about a couple of anomalies in this, though. Okay, so the Horns of Hashut, that is a, a second edition Warcry warband. That came in with the... Which were they? They're the the Nurgly um, warband that was in the original uh, Gur box. Oh, I can't remember what they're called. We think these are on the list because they're being removed from the Slaves to Darkness, not because they're necessarily leaving the range. So we think either they're going to stay in the range, they're, we're going to keep seeing that box in print, or we're going to see it go out and then come back a bit later. And the reason we think it's going to come back, or the reason we think it's going to stick around for the next edition of Age of Sigmar is because there's lots of rumors about the Chaos Dwarfs coming back in. And the Chaos Dwarfs have the Horns of Hashut as their scouts. So those are the, the advanced forces of the Chaos Dwarfs. Uh, Hashut being the Chaos God of the Dwarfs. So that's where the connection is. So we think they're on the list, even though they're version 2, purely because of that connection. So they're not actually being discontinued, but they're being removed from the Slaves of Darkness. So that's happening there. The Dark Oath, we are expecting a big box range for the Dark Oath. Um, so all of the all of the Slaves of Darkness, Chaos, Savages, Savages is a bad word, but uh, Barbarians? No, it's a bad word too. These guys. This is the, the lightly armored warriors that we're going to see in the Slave of Darkness. They've got kind of a fixed, unique team to them, and they're going to be consistent across the Slave of Darkness range, rather than what we had, which was all the War Cry Warbands bundled in. Now, the other anomaly is the Shadow Stalkers. And now they're a bit of an interesting one. So, right now, the Shadow Stalkers fit into the Daughters of Cain. Um, but we do believe that we're expecting some sort of uh, Ooglu 
Malarian update. So Malarian is the god of the Shadow Elves, essentially. Um, uh, he used yeah he used to be Malekith of the Dark Elves. We're expecting something fun happening there, so they might just consider that to be an important part of the uh, Daughters Cain line, or we might be seeing more story along with elements. So what's happening here is we're seeing a little bit more of an alignment between um, the Warcry Warbands and the Age of Sigmar Warbands. So a few of the old version 1 Warbands that no longer align into one of the big armies are getting dropped. If you have been playing for a while, you know, hopefully you've already got them if you want them. Um, if you're tempted, now is the time to get them if you still can. Uh, but yeah, it is... it. I don't want to say it is what it is, because uh, there's there's more to it than that. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I want to keep going and talking about how great they are supporting Warcry. So this is the roadmap. So this is uh, what they put out uh, just after they'd given us a Nightmare quest reveal. How long ago is this? This may have been... Um, yeah, this was probably Warhammer Quest, actually. I think they may have told us in Warhammer Quest. I think maybe we got the previews of uh, the Quester Souls Forum and whatever flesh eater court warband they were going against. This is an updated version I've done. And this has all of the releases. So we got our Crypt of Blood. Uh, and yeah, that was just a reprint of Xander's Street Seekers and Crimson Court. And if you look at my video, I think it's a fantastic starter set, but it's a little bit too expensive. So uh, if you're starting, I don't recommend buying it. But if you're trying to get some of the start, it is actually a fantastic thing for you to pick up for them and uh, give it as a gift. Hunters and Hunted was wildly successful, so we've just seen the Wither Corpse Hunters and Gorger Mopak go up for pre-order. Um, I do believe that has the, been quite popular with uh, the Age of Sigmar players as well. So the Wither Corp Hunters do see, feature in a lot of the Cities of Sigmar lists. Um, not sure about the Gorger Mopak, I'd hope they do. And then, of course, at the same time, we did get the two separate boxes of the Vulcan Flame Seekers and the Cruel Boy Monster Killers. They came a little bit out of the blue because it did kind of look like they maybe could have gone together as a, a single box. It's all good. Um, Pyre and Blood, again, has just gone for pre-ordered. The Pyre guys look fantastic. And the Euralian River Blades, hopefully we'll get a um, review of that over the next week or two. And then we know Briar and Bone is due out. So as you can see, those dates have been pushed out. So the winter is now, a sp or it is now spring and we've just got the winter releases hopefully we'll get the the spring release soon enough that schedule is essentially a warband what is it every two months something new a new box that's pretty good um we're not being neglected you know we are still getting releases more importantly they did take our feedback uh, that we gave at a uh, warmer fest we think that's why we started seeing the underworld's warbands back in white dwarfs and i also believe firmly that they have noticed when they <laughs> when they put rules for uh, underworld's warbands and warcry rules for them in white dwarfs all of a sudden they sell out so i, I do think Warcry is uh, helping drive some of those uh, underworld sales, and I do think uh, GW can see based on timeline sales that that is happening. So, um, what am I saying? Warcry is being supported. We're getting lots of releases. We're getting lots of support. Um, there is a clear line between the models that they've kept around and Age of Sigmar, uh, the major war game. So it does look like. It's a nice stepping stone up. So you get a couple of uh, warbands and you know you join it into your bigger army. Makes sense. Let's look at the potential of Warcry 3.0. Now we'll start by looking at the top row, which is uh, Age of Sigmar first edition that came out in 2015. The second edition came out in 2018. And the third edition came out in 2021. Now we're expecting, we know, we're getting Age of Sigmar 4 in 2024. See the pattern? That's three years. Consistently three years. That is the model that Games Workshop worked by. Warcry released in 2019. In 2022, we got Heart of Gur. Therefore, we are expecting to see Warcry 3 in 2025. Now... The difference between Warcry 1st Edition and Warcry 2nd Edition 
was very, very, very slight. They added reactions, and they did a full revamp of all of the warbands. It was great. They did a fantastic job. If they do the same approach for Warcraft 3, or for Warcry 3, um, then we're singing. Great. Uh, the possibility is there that they might drop all of the old warbands. So all the version, version 1 warbands, that's the danger. So if you have your Iron Golems, that they will no longer be competitive. Maybe they'll be moved into Legends. Now, Warcry doesn't have Legends at the moment, um, but that could be something that happens, uh, or they could just be written out. So that's the concern. Um, I would recommend uh, popping off an email to warcryfaq at gwplc.com. I think it is. Uh, I'll make sure to put that exact email in the description. If you're worried about that, if you have those warbands and you want to make sure that uh, they are not written out, you know, pop them off in the email, say, I've got this warband, I've got that warband. I'm, I'm concerned with the recent announcement of Age of Sigmar and I don't want my warbands gone. Now, however, just because there is an addition change doesn't necessarily mean there aren't changes. So here are two uh, sets of fighters. So on the left-hand side, we've got the old cities of Sigmar, uh, um, Wanderers, they're called. I think these are the Sisters of the Flame, something like that. They are, with the new Cities of Sigmar um, line, uh, the old list we had got broken up into the new human faction, the Dispossessed for the Dwarves, and the Darkling Covens for the Dark Elves. Yeah, for Dark Elves. Uh, this faction essentially is the old Wood Elves. That was taken out. Those models no longer have any rules. Now, you can still proxy them. You can take those fighters and you can put them in. And, you know, you can take a tournament pay, play. People won't have a problem with it. That's not a big deal. Um, as long as it's clear and there's no kind of confusion. For... Yeah... And this is this is kind of a thing. This is something to watch out for. Anything that looks like it's old world is getting separated from Age of Sigmar, which is part of part of the challenge. Um, Rob the Honest Wargamer has a really interesting video talking about the the divide in Games Workshop between the kind of core games and special studios, and it does look like that we are seeing two separate studios with two profit centers trying to distinguish themselves. So. Um, you really, if yeah, if you're pushing Warcry, you want to make sure people are buying Warcry and Age of Sigmar models, or specifically Warcry models, so your bosses know that you're doing a good job and you're generating sales. Um, not a great way to do business, honestly, because really you should be doing everything you can to drive sales for everyone, and the senior manager should just be a little bit smarter, but that's the heater, neater here or there. On the right-hand side, we have another thing. So this is the Vargulf Courtier. Um, the FEC, the Flesh Eater Courts, got a big update. It was a fantastic update, very happy with it. Um, big range of new models, but this guy got a new model, and his new model does not have wings that, I guess, flap. So they removed fly, and they read it as stats. Um, so this old model, all of a sudden, is kind of gone. Uh, so that can happen. You know, minor changes can take models out. You know, you can end up with things that you've painted, that you love, that are no longer competitive. Uh, it's not that they have been taken out of the game, but playing them is subpar, inefficient, a bad choice. And often that's as bad, if not worse, because at least if they took it out, you wouldn't inflict it on yourself, I guess. I mean, if you if you love these models so much that you just want to keep playing with bad models, um, you probably will. And you, I don't know, hopefully you'll have a good time doing it, but it's not a great place to be. Now, there is a flip side. Okay. Velmorn and what are these gobbles called? It's not the Loon Court. It's the previous one. Oh, I can't remember. 
Um, but most importantly, uh, Prog the Netter is in here. Um, both of these Underworld War Bands are out of print. Both of these Underworld War Bands are incredibly good in Warcry. So with Velmorn, the resurrection rules um, ended up being slightly different, I think, because it's to do with minions, was it? I think the resurrection ability refers to minions, whereas his resurrection ability uh, doesn't. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, these guys uh, work better. That's the best way of saying it. Uh, and meanwhile, on the right-hand side, we've got um, goblins that were costed under the version 1 rules and came out a lot better. So Progdenetter is just slightly more efficient than a um, normal netter. And that guy in the ball, who again, whose name is just lost to me, uh, is possibly one of the best damage dealers in disruption in destruction he's just a fantastic character or a fantastic fighter um but yeah you can't get these so let's think about this down the line if we do manage to get rules in version three but you cannot get any uh, version one warbands at that point that could be a problem you know if it turns out that iron golems have the best rules in the game but you can't get your hands on them, then that's really going to suck for new players. So we have to keep that in mind. The flip side is, and what often happens in cases like this, so this is what happens with Underworlds. As Underworlds progresses, uh, the models get better and better. The fighters get better and better. So any of the old stuff that's out of print, no one is really too bothered by because uh, they're not, you know, they're not top aiding. They're not winning tournaments because the newer ones are better and you can buy the ones that are newer um but you know the advantage there is you can still play the old ones if your heart desires um, and i know a lot of people are fans of those uh, fire slayers from the, the the very early on part of the game and no matter how bad they've been throughout still keep trying to play them but that's it all right so that's one of the benefits for removing the version one more bans from the rules. I don't necessarily recommend it. I think, unfortunately, the best case scenario is, um, well, oh, best case scenario is, you know, down the line, GW reprints these again. They get their their stuff in order. Um, you know, maybe once a year, they can bring out all the old war bands and we can pre-order them. In a best case scenario, they have a system where we go, we want this model. And they go, okay, we'll get it to you in a month. And, you know, they find a way to, um, to to magically make that profitable. Neither here nor there. The, yeah, what we're probably going to see is we're probably going to see in a version 3, and um, we're probably going to see that the version 1 Warmans will be kind of subpar. They'll still be decent, they'll still be good, but they're not going to be winning tournaments. And you know what? That's probably okay. The last thing I want to talk about is the worst case scenario. So this is where Warcry stops overnight. And it sounds crazy, but it has happened to other games. You know, if Games Workshop is having internal cash flow problems, they could literally shut down all the specialist games. You know, Warcry, Kill Team, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, every, maybe not Blood Bowl, that's probably a bit too successful for them. But, you know, they could just strip ranges and just stop producing anything for them, and, you know, you're gone. If that happens, we are going to still be playing Warcry. Warcry is a fantastic game. We have the models for it. We already have the rules for it. We have a community that is willing to, you know, look and talk about these models, consider what's good and what's bad. And if we get into a situation where GW do abandon um, Warcry completely, then we'll probably do something like the Blood Bolt guys did with their living rulebooks, and we'll make sure it is maintained. We'll make sure that there's you know a group of players who are competent and are trustworthy to try balance things, which essentially is what we're doing with um, with GW at the moment. We are trusting that the developers that they have picked and are paying are doing a good job. You know, if they decide to stop paying them and they you know don't do that. We can do that ourselves. That's not a problem. I think that's all I have to say for it. So the, the sky isn't falling. We're in a fantastic place with Warcry right now. 
Age of Sigmar is going to lose a bunch of models from its production line. It is really unfortunate. Um, there are definitely better ways for him to do it. Yeah. Um, at least we are aware now. We know what to, you know, have a look at those Warcry Warbands, see what you love, and have a look at those, um, you know, the, the Strongcast, the... Maybe not escape models. Those escape models are so bad. But the Beasts of Chaos, who are also quite bad. There are some nice ones in there, though. Um, and kind of work out what you would like uh, to, to hang on to. Uh, there are going to be rules for them. You can proxy them in. Um, one of the things that I love doing is doing special case things. Because you know, the focus of this channel, as I keep saying to myself... Um, is always to try to put together a great two-player game. So with a two-player game, you know... If we're putting together special scenarios with special models and special profiles for them, we don't have to stick with whatever um, you know GW have. If they take out the Beast of Chaos and we have a Beast of Chaos Warband, we can put together a signature specific set of rules, power them up, power them down, you know, make them kind of cool, and uh, have it as something that we can play against a specific warband designed against them. It's all there, you know. So worst case scenario, we just keep playing Warcry. It is unfortunate that we're not going to be able to get the models as easy. I suspect we're probably going to see a chunk of these go into the scalper market because they know, you know, GW aren't going to be selling them. So they know there is going to be demand. But at the same time, trying to get wrapped up in the FOMO, uh, we are getting great models. It is being well supported and there's more exciting, fun things ahead of us. So while it'll be sad to see those uh, classic chaos warbands uh, going down the line. I think we're going to have some fun things ahead of th ahead of us to look forward to. All right, that's all for me. Have a good one. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.